Now, Hannah Wilk will use various mediums, including photography, performance, sculpture, and video, to examine and challenge the prevailing notions of femininity, feminism, and sexuality. She's going to argue that we are far too prudish about sexuality, probably stemming from the Victorians. She's going to argue about what it means to be feminine and the view of what it means to be feminine in the 1970s and 80s, which is a very, very conservative view. This sort of concept of the woman stays at home, raises the children, etc., etc., something that we've moved past at this point. And she's trying to push people past that point. She's also one of the first artists to use vaginal or imagery of the female vulva in her work with the purpose of directly engaging with feminist issues. After all, she sees this as the ultimate symbol of female identity, so why not use it in the art talking about these feminine ideas? Now, during the late 1950s through the early 1970s, she worked on creating a type of female iconography based on the body, constructing abstract organic forms that would closely resemble female genitalia. And she displayed these forms on the floor or a wall in a highly organized, repetitious manner that we'll recall minimalism. During the 1970s, she began to use her own body for performance pieces that she called her performalist self-portraits. These performances, immortalized on video or in photographs, confront erotic stereotypes by calling attention to, and making ironic, the conventional gestures, poses, and attributes, attributes excuse me, of the female body. So, Part of what she's doing with the vaginal imagery, for example, is trying to look for a shorthand. Now, when you think of the penis, we have a shorthand for masculinity. We have a shorthand for the penis. You see it drawn on probably 30% of, of all the bathroom stalls in all of the world. But yet we don't have a shorthand for female genitalia. And she's looking at that and making us ask, hey, is there actually a double standard here? Is there something missing? Do we need that shorthand? She's going to explore a lot of those ideas. And she's going to create the Scarification Object series. Now, there's a number of different pieces here. So you're going, we're going to show, or I'm going to show you a number of them. Uh, but this is one of the main pieces. In the SOS, Scarification Object series, Wilk poses half nude for a series of black and white photo stills adopting the accoutrements and, a, and attitudes of female celebrities. So we get that celebrity feel. How people, how we would expect celebrities to be photographed if they're topless, something that means to be or is intended to be sexual. But on top of it, her torso is going to be scarred with chewing gum. And we see that chewing gum on her skin, speaking to the objectification of women. But that chewing gum goes one step further. The gum, and here's one opportunity, it says at the bottom, by the way, to Carl from Love Hannah. She uses chewing gum to try and create a visual shorthand for the female genitalia, for the vulva. And to her, that's important that women have that sort of shorthand, have that way to express their sexuality in a quick and straightforward way, the same way men do. The chewing gum interrupts the viewer's desiring gaze. It calls attention to the objectification of the female body. It interrupts the form. So when we look at it, we see something very, very sexual, but then we see the gum on it and we go, whoa, wait a minute. And our brain, for at least a split second, processes it, processes it as some kind of horrific scar until we realize it's a prosthetic or effectively a prosthetic in the form of chewing gum. So it really makes us question these images and question how we look at women. She wants us to see that we tend to objectify the female form. That we look at the female form differently than the male form. For example, 
The male form, if we see a male at the pool and he's in his 50s or 60s and he's got a belly and he's got uh, hair all over the place and he's definitely not an Abercrombie model, we don't call him out on it. We don't sit there and go, hey, that's wrong. We don't chuckle at it. We don't point at it. But if a woman shows up at a pool and has even a little bit of pubic hair showing through beneath a bikini, suddenly everyone's pointing. Suddenly everyone's talking about it. Oh my God, can you imagine Sally has pubic hair? Wow! This is too much. Take Tommy back and away from this horrible thing. I mean, it's a definite double standard, and she's trying to draw that out. That there is this double standard, that we do look at these things very, very differently. So we see this as the objectification of the female form and calling to question how we look at the female form in comparison to how we begin to look at the male form. 